professional life is challenging at the best of times, and we should expect it to be so. As professionals, we are intellectually engaged, we are well paid, we have the highs of a win and the learning experience from a loss. For the M&A specialist and the commercial lawyers amongst us, you have the responsibility for the financial and other deals that are important for the economic vitality of our city, state and nation. As family lawyers, property lawyers, litigators, as generalists, you are each an important cog in the way we function as a community. As country lawyers, you are part of the working hubs of our regional and rural towns. So we're very fortunate and more fortunate than many. But who would have expected a pandemic and one which has come around a second time to bite us just when we thought we were getting back to some form of normality? At this time, I'm also particularly mindful of our colleagues in Victoria, how difficult their lives will be for the next six weeks at least. And even today, as I record this message, it's Victoria's worst day ever. There is no doubt that COVID-19 has impacted everyone, particularly women with family responsibilities, parents as well as children. As members of the broader community, I have no doubt that like me, you are also concerned about the short-term to medium-term economic and social impacts the pandemic will have. And even if you are fortunate not to be directly impacted, at the end of the day, we are all affected when there is uncertainty, short and long-term unemployment, and social disadvantage. At the beginning of the pandemic, people turned to ways to engage and to have fun. The Friday night Zoom drinks, the exercise regime, the family bake-offs, or ways to remain intellectually and professionally engaged with all those podcasts and webinars. My sense is, however, that this has all turned into more of a trudge and sometimes seems interminable. On top of all this, there are still the ever-present stories of various forms of conduct towards women in the profession that simply cannot be tolerated. As someone who has been in the profession for such a long time, I cannot express the depth of my sadness that this is even a topic of conversation, let alone something that has persisted for so long. My advice, look, there's no single answer and there's no silver bullet. I do know, however, that as smart professionals, you can't let these issues define who you are individually and who you are as a group. As smart professionals, it's your reputation as professionals which should be at the forefront of everything you do. It is as professionals that you gain the respect of others. It is as respected professionals that your voice will best be heard and others will stand with you. This is all very serious, I know. Is there light at the end of whichever tunnel it is that you are going down? Well, always. In my present role, I have the unique privilege of engaging with a broad range of community groups. I spent one Friday night recently on a Zoom drinks party. Yes, yet another one. But this one was one with a difference. It was the monthly catch up of mothers who have a child with muscular dystrophy. To listen to their stories of how they navigate each day how much more difficult things have been with COVID restrictions, to listen to them sharing very practical information of how to deal with the obstacles they face daily was one of the best one and a half hours that I've spent. The light at the end of their tunnel is just getting to the end of every day. Although everyone's problems are different and no problem is unimportant, as lawyers, we are intelligent, resilient and resourceful individuals. With friendships and a strong community around us, we have support. Law is such a rewarding profession, and by being very good at our game, by being supportive, collegiate, and speaking up as necessary, it will continue to be rewarding for you and for all the young women that we welcome into it.